So, now I can say, let's keep on sort of like digging details out of this graph. It says, find its maximum height above the ground and the time to reach this height. Did you go ahead and work out where the vertex was? I kind of think you had to if you were going to graph it in a reasonable way. So this spot here, we can take advantage of the symmetry of a parabola, right? The axis of symmetry is going to be halfway between the roots, which is true even when you don't have roots, or at least not real ones. So I've got time two being the spot at which I reach my maximum height. I'm interested in displacement, which is which of the functions? Which function? It's the first one, which is x, right? So I'm going to say x, using function notation again, at time two. And you can plug it in, and hopefully you get, well, let's see here, 40 minus 5 times 2 squared. Which is why, in fact, I actually had to work this out beforehand so that I knew this graph would be reasonably accurate. Okay? Right, so have I answered the question at this point? I just need to have some units on there because it's not centimeters, it's not kilometers, it's meters. Find the acceleration at the top of the flight. So the top of the flight is that point we just bothered finding just now, right? Find the acceleration at the top of the flight. Well, have a look at your acceleration graph. What's acceleration doing? It doesn't change ever. It's constant, right? So no, it didn't matter whether you asked whether it was at the top of the flight or at the bottom or when it hits the ground. The acceleration is always negative 10 meters, right? So part D. Because this question is in words, I'd like to say the acceleration in words is, have a look, like I had earlier, right? I can say it's accelerating downwards at, now I haven't talked about this yet, but we just talked about the units of displacement, the units of velocity. What are the units of acceleration? Hmm. So, oops, negative. My length unit is going to be meters. That hasn't changed. But remember, oh, I'm going to go back to it, uh, right here. Remember, acceleration, we find that by, oh, I froze it. Sorry. Thank you. There we go. We found acceleration by differentiating with respect to time a second time, right? On a second occasion. So therefore, our time unit is not just going to be per second. It's going to be per second per second. In fact, that's sometimes the way people say it. Meters per second per second. That's a little bit awkward and harder to write. So people will say per second squared, right? You will also see this written being that this per, right? It's division. It's a fraction after all. You will also see this written as negative 10 meters per second negative 2 right? Because that, they mean the same thing. It's just using index notation, okay? So you're going to have to get used to seeing that and recognizing, or accordingly, up the top here, how could I write velocity instead of using that notation? Yeah, it's 20 meters per second, and that's how I write the per part of it, okay? Because that just means take the fraction part. Yes, Mrs. Lees? If you said acceleration is downwards, do you mean the negative? Oh, yeah, I don't actually, because I... Thank you. Ugh. I describe direction using words, so I don't need to put the negative sign, because the negative sign, it's, yeah, exactly, it's, yeah, good call. So, are you okay with that? I've described the direction, I've described its magnitude, that's all I need for a vector. Uh, what was the question? Is there a question attached to that? Oh, so, we've established that acceleration is not changing at any given point. Uh, it's always downwards at 10 meters per second per second, okay? So, how can it be that at that point, you're not going anywhere. Because velocity is zero at this point, right? In fact, what do we call a point like this? When we first introduced geometrical applications of calculus, what do we call a spot like that? We call it a stationary point because that's literally what the ball is doing. It is stationary at that moment, okay? Acceleration is non-zero, but that doesn't mean velocity can't be zero, yeah? Because in fact, they are two completely different graphs. Does that make sense? So there's no reason why you can't have velocity being zero while acceleration is something other than that, okay? In fact, you actually have a look at what the velocity is doing, right? Here it is going downwards. It's changing sign from positive, you're moving upwards to negative. Now you're moving downwards. But acceleration this entire time has always been downwards. It's always been, well, we talked about gravity before, right? And that doesn't change, at least while we're standing on the surface of the Earth. 
All right, are we up to the last part, right? Party. When is the ball height 15 meters and what are its velocities then? So you can kind of tell by the way they've given you this plural language within the question that there's not one but two spots where this happens and you have a look at your graph, you might like to put an extra bit on here. Where's 15 gonna be? Somewhere like here, zoop. So here are my two spots, right? I'm expecting one before time two and one after time two. So how do I find, how do I solve this question? How do I actually, yeah, look at those locations? Well, if what I know about this is it's when displacement is 15, then the place I'm gonna go in all my equations is the displacement equation, right? You've got so many equations flying around, a big part of how you're solving this question is working out which one you actually need. So I wanna say there's the displacement equation. And I'm interested when that is equal to... A good question. 15. 15. Thank you. Uh, it's just a quadratic. I might rearrange this and divide, make it a little simpler. So I think I can do this. Mm. Can someone go ahead and factorize for me? Oops, what am I doing? That's a T. Like, I've, uh, that's it, I got my numbers switched around. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's switch signs. I did too many things in one go. Can someone factorize for me now that we have the right equation? Now, when you factorize this, you do your sense check and does it look like what your graph is telling you? Looks pretty good, right? Remember we said we're expecting a time before two and a time after two. Uh, bingo, that looks pretty good. If you drew your graph of reasonable accuracy, then you would confirm that as well. So I've got time one or three. Have I answered the question at this point? I need to find the velocities at these times, right? So I'm just gonna say V1 and V3. You go ahead and you can work them out. There's my equation there. What'd you get? 10, negative 10. So I need units on these, right, because I've said it's a velocity. In fact, I need units on all these. Uh, time one second, and this is meters per second. By the way, do you notice the symmetry again, right? We noticed this at ball launch and at ball landing. We saw this symmetry here. Why do you think we have the same symmetry when we have a look at when we're at height 15? Anything's going on? What was the very first line that we wrote when we had a look at this thing? It was about displacement and we identified, hey, it's a quadratic equation. One of the reasons why quadratic equations are so fun and easy to work with is because of this symmetry that they have, right? This is why when we look in projectile motion, this will become really important later on when you take advantage of the symmetry of the situation. If you have a look at any, you can try any displacement that you like. Try displacement one or two or three or four, anything up to 20, right? And you will get the same kind of pattern observed.